Continuing on with chapter uh, 11.2, uh, hopefully this will be the last uh, video or two. Um, we have one more topic to get through in this section, and that's called molar enthalpy, and uh, it can also relate to calorimetry, and a whole bunch of uh, different examples just to really hit the point home, which uh, explaining examples can be a little time consuming. So we'll see if uh, it's lesson five or lessons five and six as we go through this. So. Uh, talking about molar enthalpy, this is uh, the same as what we were doing uh, in the last couple of lessons where we were looking at enthalpy changes or those things that were happening to our uh, chemical reaction, be it endo or exothermic. What uh, may have kind of gone under the radar with those questions is we just had a random amount of chemical that was undergoing the reaction. In some cases it was described, in some cases it wasn't even mentioned. You just had some sort of random amount related to a random amount of energy released or a random amount of energy absorbed. So in order to standardize things, all we do is talk about a specific quantity. And for chemistry, that specific chemical amount uh, makes sense to be the mole. So the only thing that we're really adding here is to say that we're going to talk about a particular mole quantity as we go through uh, our assumptions, our calorimeters, or when we take a look at the amount of material that we actually react. So a molar enthalpy is simply put the amount of energy released or absorbed, exo or endothermic, per mole of a specific reactant consumed or a specific product produced. So these questions will be solved almost identically to what we did before. The only difference here is that you have a very specific uh, reactant or product that you're talking about and a very specific uh, quantity which we will try and uh, work out to a mole value. So there is a formula textbook it gets into. I don't like it. Oh, the only formula I really tolerate as we go through this would be the MC delta T formula just because it's so well ingrained. Um, the rest of this is more easily accomplished because we'll be relating this to stoichiometry and balanced equations through that factor label method that hopefully you guys were practicing in Chem 20. So when we take a look at this, the units for uh, molar enthalpy change are a little different than enthalpy change. Enthalpy change was just a kilojoule amount of energy that, of course, was going to be released or absorbed. If we're going to talk about energy per mole, then we need kilojoules per mole, and this is related to a particular substance. So, for example, we have random substance X. All right, this uh, one is going to release, missing a negative, 500 kilojoules per mole. So for every one mole of the combustion of substance X, I get 500 kilojoules released to the surroundings. If I have two moles of substance X that's going to be burned, then it's still 500 kilojoules per mole. But if I looked at the overall enthalpy change, because I had double the amount of stuff being burned, I would end up with double the amount of energy released in the exothermic combustion reaction. Okay, so it's we're just kind of using the mole as a measuring stick here. For this, all right, uh, one of our great chemistry teachers that we had here for years, retired a, a few years ago, he liked uh, to take a look at uh, some simple starting points for thermochemistry because all the terms are so similar and things like that, it's important to know what you're looking for. And so there's generally three starting points if you don't have a calorimeter involved in the question. If you're looking for molar enthalpy, well, we just use our units to kind of figure out how to begin. Take your energy unit, whatever energy unit you have given in the question, and then put that in the numerator of your start, uh, factor label process. And then uh, whatever amount of chemical you have, be it a volume of solution, uh, could be a mass in grams, or it could be really nice when we give it to you in moles or something like that. Just put energy over amount and then convert your units to kilojoules over moles. Okay, so for a molar enthalpy, find the energy in any way, shape, or form that you can from the question and the amount of said chemical that we're looking for. Because remember, HM has to be for something, like substance X up here. Okay, and then it's energy's con uh, convergence from there. Be mindful, this energy can come from a calorimeter. All right, all those calculations we did in the last uh, couple of lessons were generally to find energy amounts 
And so if a question doesn't tell you the joules or kilojoules, it might describe a calorimeter, which will allow you to figure out the amount of energy first. If you're looking for just a general energy term, so that might be something like your enthalpy changes that we were doing in the last one, uh, I might add, uh, ask for the change in kinetic energy, for example, because it's related to enthalpy change. I could ask for Q. There's lots of different ways that I can uh, get that energy. And so if you do have a molar enthalpy, it's got energies over moles, all you have to do is simplify and cancel out the quantity of chemical to get just energy. So you can see that we have nice, easy starting points that you'll want to practice and memorize. The other common thing I can ask is how much chemical was used or burned or reacted or neutralized, etc., etc., etc. And so if you have the molar enthalpy, just flip that to put the quantity of chemical in the numerator, the energy will go on the denominator, and then just you have to cancel out the energy with whatever information the question provides. Okay, so you have three starting points, yellow, green, or blue. It's kind of like how uh, I'll ask about it in class. And so this all relates to factor label, which I'm going to show you as we go through these examples. But uh, if the calorimeter comes involved, you can do a separate calculation for Q and then use that accordingly in your starting point. So just make sure that your solutions are organized. Here's a, a first question that we can take a look at. It says, when 5 grams of substance A reacts with an excess of substance B, the enthalpy change is 100 kilojoules released. And I know it's released because of the negative enthalpy change. That always relates to exothermic. If the molar mass of substance A is 25 grams per mole, calculate the molar enthalpy of A. So look at what the question is asking. Okay, that's one of the first things that we will do here. You're looking for molar enthalpy of A. So, where's my starting point? The yellow box, green box, or blue box? If I'm looking for molar enthalpy, that's delta HM. So I'm looking at starting with energy over amount. So, I'm looking for the molar enthalpy here for substance A. So, I will begin with the energy over the chemical amount of A, as described in the question. So, as we keep going here, uh, I was giving it an energy here, and so my solution can start with negative 100 kilojoules, and I have an amount of A, but it just happens to be given in grams. Okay, so I have a standard enthalpy here. I have kilojoules per gram, but that's not what I was looking for. Remember, molar enthalpy is kilojoules per mole. So I just have to get it to those units. So I have to convert the mass to moles. Remember that molar mass is the conversion for that step. And so with a molar mass of 25.0 grams for every mole, grams will cancel in this factor level process. And now I have kilojoules over moles. I just have to run this through my calculator. So 100 times 25 divided by 5 is going to work out to a nice easy number for us of 500 kilojoules per mole. And so there is my molar enthalpy. Forgot my negative. All right, so if you think about uh, what we're saying here is that if I have uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, 100 kilojoules given off for five grams, one mole is equivalent to 25 grams, which is five times greater in mass, that should be related to five times more energy released. Okay, so it's the same stuff that we're doing, delta H versus delta HM. The only difference is you're talking about a specific quantity involved. And since five grams was one-fifth of a mole, we ended up with one-fifth of the molar enthalpy change that we, uh, that we see in this problem. Okay, I'm hoping that makes some sense here. Uh, we'll get maybe one more example in here on uh, this video, maybe two, and then we will move on to uh, another lesson just so that these guys aren't too uh, lengthy and onerous. Here we have the combustion of 15 grams of substance X. Okay, great. And it has a molar mass of 150 grams per mole. This uh, takes place in a calorimeter and raises the temperature of 1,000 mils of water by 10 degrees C. Okay. 
calculate the enthalpy change of the water, and then determine the molar enthalpy of combustion of X. So we're going to break this one up into two parts, and I think this is how a lot of you guys will uh, like to do it. But to find out the enthalpy change of the, um, sorry, the heat change of the water. Okay, so what happened to the temperature of the water? Uh, how much heat did it absorb or uh, release in this reaction? So for that then, we know that any heating up or cooling down of the water, or Q, all right, comes from MC and delta T. We have 1,000 mils of water, so remember that is 1,000 grams. Water is 4.19 joules per gram degree C for its specific heat capacity. And we saw that the increase in temperature was 10 degrees. Okay, so unlike previous examples, this one just gave us the quantum of change rather than the initial and the final. So from that there then, you can see that 1,000, 10,000 times 4.19 should be 41,900 joules of energy. So we have that much uh, energy absorbed by the water. That's how much the water heats up by. So how does this relate to the next part? All right, when we're looking for molar enthalpy of combustion. Okay, molar enthalpy. Am I looking for the blue box, the green box, or the yellow box? Yellow box is molar enthalpy, so I just need the energy amount, uh, sorry, the energy that we had released or absorbed, and the chemical amount of whatever substance is being asked about. So we see here that we are looking for the molar enthalpy of the combustion of substance X. So I'm looking for combustion molar enthalpy of X. Therefore, I should begin with the energy over the amount of X. Well, I just figured out the energy, and so that was 41,900 joules. Now, the water heats up with this absorption of heat. That must mean that my reaction had to be exothermic. So remember that delta H is equal to negative Q and vice versa. When we're doing this in uh, separate parts, you'll have to be very cognizant of that. We also need the amount of X, and we can see in the question that we had 15 grams of X. We want to turn this into kilojoules per mole, so there'll be a couple of uh, conversions to make here. Doesn't matter which one I do first, but I had a molar mass of 150 grams per mole. So that goes. That gives me joules per mole. If I wanted to get into kilojoules, all right, I'll need to cancel joules, put kilojoules up here. I know most of you guys will be able to do that conversion in your head. I'm just showing it here in greater detail. And for every one kilojoule, it takes an equivalent 1,000 joules to match that. So joules now go, and you have kilojoules over moles. This just has to be resolved on the calculator, and it works out to, what do we have here, uh, 419 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so I hope those first two are starting to make some sense. Uh, for the remainder of these, I'm going to switch to uh, a more complete or full factor label method and uh, hopefully be able to see what I'm doing with it. If you want to stick with the formula, you certainly can. Just make sure that you are organizing your thoughts well and keeping it uh, organized on the page. Otherwise, we're just going to take a look at uh, doing this all through just unit conversion because it will make more sense as we start relating it to our balanced chemical equations. Let's do one more in this video here. All right, so we have in a calorimeter 50 mils of sodium hydroxide solution and it reacts completely with 100 mils of hydrochloric acid solution. The temperature of the solution goes up by 1.1 degrees C. What is the molar enthalpy of neutralization for NaOH? So back here to our starting points. We are either yellow box, green box, or blue box. It says you're looking for molar enthalpy of neutralization. Molar enthalpy is the yellow box, so I just have to find the amount of energy and the chemical amount of, in this case, NaOH. So I am looking here for the delta neutralization per mole of NaOH. 
So I need to begin with whatever energy I had and can find from the problem over the amount of NaOH. So that's my beginning part here. And you can see that we don't have an energy term given to us. All right, much like the previous example, we don't have that energy term. And so we have to look for where it's coming from. This one does describe a calorimeter, so my energy is going to be found with the calorimeter. So remember, delta H is equal and opposite to Q with our calorimeter. So whatever Q we can find out here can be related to the enthalpy change for the given reaction. And then we can standardize that with the amount. So I need to begin with energy. If I do this in a full factor label method, uh, when using your MC delta T kind of information here, you can calculate that separately. Or you can realize that your specific heat capacity has an energy term in it. All right, so we can use that to our advantage. So I'm going to start out with that, 4.19. I'm going to go to kilojoules per kilogram uh, times degree C. All right, just so that I can get to my kilojoule uh, value a little bit faster. Now this is the part dealing with the heating up uh, of water. So there's my C. I need the amount of solution. I have 50 mils of one, 100 mils of another. They're in the same calorimeter, so I have 150 mils or 150 grams of water. So multiply by 0 0.150 kilograms of water. I'll just put that over one. My kilograms now go. And 23.9 minus 22.8, final minus initial, is just a 1.1 degree C temperature change. And so degrees C go, and now I have my kilojoules. All this stuff that I did right here is just describing the MC delta T calculation for my calorimeter, which is Q. That, of course, has to be made negative for my delta H. All right, and so now whatever I calculate for Q, make it negative, is relative to my delta H, which is the energy term. All I have to do now is put in the chemical amount of NaOH, and you can see that I had 50 mils. Okay, so I'm gonna change that to liters because remember, concentration is given in moles per liter, and so that'll be 0 0.0500 liters of my NaOH. Now I have kilojoules over amount, or energy over amount. I just have to turn liters into moles, and from that concentration, I can do this. So 0.122 moles per liter. I'll put the liter on top. 0.122 moles goes in the bottom. So I flip that fraction in order to cancel out my liters. And there you go. There's kilojoules over moles. This just has to go through your calculator. And as you do this one here, uh, you end up with can't remember the decimal amount here, so I'll just quickly run it through the calculator. 4.19 times 0 0.150 times 1.1 divided by 0 0.05 and divided again by 0 0.122. And I get negative 113.33 kilojoules per mole. Three digits, three digits, two digits, three and three. I have to put the number of 113 uh, kilojoules per mole into two digits. That's going to require scientific notation, so it becomes negative 1.1 times 10 to the 2 kilojoules per mole. There you go, guys. There's your first three examples. I hope they're starting to make sense. All right. For those that uh, resist the factor label method, remember you can do this problem the exact same way you did here. Calculate Q from your MC delta T calculation and then use that in your energy over amount statement as you continue on and figure out the molar enthalpy. Good luck with that one. We'll continue the examples in the next video.